What's up, people? One Nut Punch here. Quick thing I want to talk about here with Master Bladesmith is that a letter called State of the Game came up in my events for my, uh, like, Steam library. Because I normally go and check the early access stuff to see what new patch notes came out for games I played. Or if, like, something else kind of happened. Well, I'm going to talk about this, and I'm going to talk about it in the most negative light possible. But I'm going to be tame about it. Because it's about my 6th or 7th try in trying to do a recording. So let's go ahead and talk about why I think people should stay away from this game. And why early access does have issues. But I don't think people should consider it a stigma that you should never touch. For example, a lot of the AAA games that have come out have not been good lately. Like for Spoken and Starfield. That you get promised by these AAA studios that it's going to be an amazing game. You get charged $60-$70 only to then get screwed in this unfinished trash. However, there is also the same concept with early access that if you do buy a game for $23, it'll be unplayable and maybe even get abandoned. That is exactly what is going on with Master Bladesmith. The letter he sent, technically in short, stated, there is no more updates happening to this game. It's going to be completely marked from early access into full, and there will be nothing else done to it because he's going to work on a new project and make people buy that instead. And I'm going to talk to you about the letter. We'll even read it a little bit just so I, you know, show you guys what I mean when I say that you should watch out when you play some early access games. Again, this is not the first guy, nor will it be the last. Team Meowzy that made Cygnus Enterprise did the same bullshit when they told us to keep their game for $25 after they shut their doors and left. Link's Works that made Origami 1 and 2 did the same thing. Then you had Boss of Studios that made Worlds of Drift, and then Tryon Studios that made Atlas Reactor. Both games canned, both developers gone. So again, it's difficult to know whether a developer is going to stick with the game and update it and make it better, or completely abandon it and let it just die and rot in the ground. So, this is one of them that people should stay away from. What is Master Bladesmith? It's a VR blacksmith game. Essentially, you have this mechanic to where there's this thing called the washer or washing plant. And you can get ore like nickel, iron, or, uh, yeah, nickel, iron, copper, tin. And you take the ore back to your, like, workstation place. And you make weapons of war or, I guess, different swords and different, I guess, equipment. I don't know about shields, but I made like a different amount of daggers and long swords and so on. And that essentially right there was the cauldron that you'd bring with molten lava that would be used to make the weapon instead of a mold. But you would go and take those weapons and you could either wear the armor or you can sell it to the store for more money. After you were done doing this, or while you were waiting for more ore to pop up, the washing plant, which was a giant machine that was given mineral ore or rocks, from these like carts that were going automated or maybe used by magic, would dump rocks into the machine and it would sift through it to find the ore that would spit out. There was two different modes to this. There was normal and there was overdrive. And overdrive used 2x fuel, or 5x fuel rather, to have 2x the amount of items being produced. So hopefully it would bring more, but it never really happened. And the only way to power the machine is by using these gems or crystals that gave it energy and time. So if you had three red crystals, it would be like maybe 35 minutes to an hour. Or you had four blue crystals, and it was even more than that. Overdrive always made it shorter. That being said, the game's full asking price is $29.99, currently on sale for $23.99. Now let's go ahead and talk about as to why I should tell you guys that you can go ahead and believe me or not. It's up to you but you should stay the hell away from this. This is why. They came out with a literal state of the game today, June 30th, 2024. I'm going to read it from top all the way down to a specific point, point to the bottom because it's not really much besides like, you know, the fake, hey, thank you for the support, but see you later type of deal. He starts off by saying, this is not an update with new features, nor a software release. In fact, the game isn't changing at all. However, it's now moving into being marked as, a, as released. Many have asked why there are no updates, and asked for more communication. Rightly so. 
as the game has been in early access for quite some time and hasn't received an update for a lot of that time. So this is an official communication about the state of the game, which, by the way, kind of a backhanded deal if you're going to be like, well, I want communication. Well, here you go. Here's the, um, you know, the bad stuff. Better prepare for it. So let's go ahead and read what he's going to say next. Master Bladesmith was always an experimental game. This is especially true for the game's mechanics. This is a fitting. This is fitting since it's a virtual reality or virtual reality game, and this is a new frontier for gaming, where developers have tried many different game mechanics and designs. The development of Master Bladesmith can only be described as a mishmash of experimental mechanics. The ones that worked stayed, and the ones that didn't were thrown away. Also, some stayed that were not successful, but as curiosities, like the out-of-body movement that remains an option to try. What was left as a result is something I'm very proud of, and something that's fun from both a gameplay and progression-style game loop. Again, I find that obnoxious as hell, but stating that you should be proud of something that's unfinished trash is uh, not really saying much as to me a person that bought your game for $30 and to anybody else that supported you and bought your game for $30. So, um, kind of crappy, but we'll get to that at the end. However, the above led to a conundrum that in order to keep pushing the game into a direction that had dreamed for the game, it would have to, it would have to push boundaries with game design so much that the mechanics didn't work together well. In the original roadmap, there were open world elements and dungeon like manual mining areas this doesn't ha- this doesn't work well with the current game uh so it became more and more clear that in order to achieve this without destroying the current game loop it would have to be a separate project the development has now moved into a completely different game altogether this is something that's going to be a very special project that i've been working on for 3 years now it's a spiritual successor to master bladesmith However, this project is so different that it cannot work with Master Bladesmith's code. This project is an open world RPG with questing and party building aspects. Move, moving Master Bladesmith to release is more so an end to a project than a beginning. It means that there will be no more updates for the game. Again, blood pressure rising just a little bit, but we'll try to get past this. And, and I get to flame them because it is full release. I realize that Master Bladesmith is still roughed around the edges and have some regrets about this. I was skeptical of whether releasing was the right move for the game since this didn't fit from my personal definition of finished. No shit. However, the community expects that the, a game marked as early access means that more updates are coming. So now that I've decided there will be none, the right thing to do is mark the game as finished. Which, by the way, imagine marking a game and then charging people $30 and stating during early access you're going to give them a roadmap of new things that never happened, only then completely abandon it later? What a smooth mood, dude. Congratulations on that one. I am, however, also intensely proud of what has been achieved here with this project. Credit also goes to all those that helped with the game and its development. Word about the players, there are many skilled warriors out there that fought their way all the way to level 1,000. This requires both patience and crafting prowess, but also great skill with hand-eye coordination on the higher levels. And this is something I haven't been able to achieve myself, nor any of the dev team. But many players have, and provided proof I'm glad that many have had such a great time with the game. Special thanks to the moderators and all those pr- provided useful feedback and help with beta testing and updates. Much love to the community. Uh, dislike, 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 dislike. So. Essentially, he is, like, putting out this game, telling you to continuously support him because he, he needs your money. And the feedback he's talking about is whatever his ego is driving him to do. This game, if you're proud of what you have done, you should be worried about what other people are going to say and think about you for the next couple of years. Because first of all, this is essentially a cash grab. And the fact is, is that not only have you not done jack shit for two years, by the way, of no reporting, of no communication, 
of absolutely nothing until today, June 30th, 2024, where you were telling people, oh, the game wasn't early access, so I decided it's not early access anymore. Hey, no new updates or features. Thanks for your money, but I need more of it. Just like what Bernie Sanders said. Like, dude, I don't understand why you would screw over the backers, consumers, and people that supported you, cared about your game, gave you the money to continuously make it better, only to then abandon it and make something brand new. That's a cash grab right there. And the fact that you are charging people that much money and not refunding them anything, not even like, you're not even giving them any, I, like it'd be different if you gave them a t-shirt or even like made another couple of updates before being like, oh, well, I'm moving on to this and better things. But instead, you just mark it as, oh, it's done. Here you go. It's like trying to microwave raw meat. It's not cooked. It's still raw and shit. I don't know what you were trying to do, but it's not going to work. And I want people to know that stuff like this should not happen. And stuff like this is stuff that you should watch out for. Like I said on YouTube and Twitch a long time ago, I even say it to the day sometimes. You don't have to take my word for it. But things like this do happen. And it's something to watch out. Because people will go out there and think, or think that their, their project or whatever they do is like God level. And that anything they touch is gold. The ego is so far up the guy's ass, I don't even think that he knows what's going on. And I would never go buy anything this guy makes simply because of what he did for his original game. Same thing with Crafton that made Thunder Tier 1, a top-down kind of SOCOM game. They abandoned that shit after one update, and that was it. It was still in early access. So I cannot agree with anything that you say, nor should I ever let anybody that's part of my community if I have one, I don't think I do. Um, or people that I know, friends of mine that I met in other games, buy your shit simply because it looks interesting. Because I don't want them to. I do not want them to waste even money buying your game on a sale. Because of how screwed that letter was. Truly. The best course of action is to mark it out of early access, put it in front of people and be like, it's done. Here, come and get it. It's still dripping blood. And it's not even finished. So I cannot tell you that it is worth going off and buying, especially when they do this shit. And it's obvious. So again, I do apologize for being a little bit passionate about this. But again, on my channel, on YouTube, I have talked about a lot of good games in the past. I mean, even underrated games. And I do talk about them in a good light because I've had good experiences with them. You know, I even talked about this a long time ago when I did a little bit of a video for it. I might have removed it because after finding out that he wasn't doing shit for two years and that nothing was happening, that now you should just support him anyway because he's back doing something new? No, absolutely not. Do something with your old project or refund all the people that gave you for your beta slash experimental rough draft. Because if that's the case, then Steam should come after you for that shit. But anyway, I wanted to get that off my chest because this is something that came up just today. And that if you were thinking about getting this for VR, you want something different, stay away from it. But it's up to you if you want to get it or not. I bought it for $30 long ago and, you know, I thought it was decent for, what, 13 hours of play? Being able to craft weapons and stuff and look at them. But after that, it was just so boring, there was nothing to do. And you're going to be waiting forever in the time chamber to get ores. That being said, I've been one nut punch, and this has been a video slash rant. This might be the actual upcoming of my um, original show I did a long time ago called Raining Rants, which I would go on and I would just flame the living hell out of stuff and stupid decisions that people made in gaming, whether it be early access or not. So. But I let people know that if you're going to get this or you're going to try it out or whatever, it's up to you. That's the risk you take. Otherwise, I highly recommend people staying away from this trash. And anytime he talks about something new or takes his name or studio and changes the name, I do not recommend going near it. Again, 
There have been other studios that did the same bullshit. One in particular that did Twisted Path to Renown did This Land is My Land and Naval Action. Both games, nothing happened. Both games were probably abandoned. And they made other games that no one's ever even heard of that nothing happens with. Like, that's something with Gettysburg and Ultimate General. Like, just watch out when you play games like these. Because you don't know whether or not the developer is going to screw you over or make incredible updates like they did for Inkbound, Dead Cells a long time ago, Darkest Dungeon 2, and then new stuff for Quasimorph and Convergence. But it's up to you guys what you think. I'm just letting you know what's going on and that I did get a letter from this stating, hey, um, not sorry, but continue to give me money. And that's just bullshit. But anyway, I've been One Nut Punch. I'll see you later in the next one.